This is by far one of the hardest competitions I've ever participated in. The user base has grown every year. The quality of the challenge has increased. It's definitely become more competitive. A unique experience you don't find elsewhere, and it's kind of neat to see what the, the government has to offer as a whole when it comes to cybersecurity. President's Cup is mostly formatted the same. We have individuals and teams competitions. We have two virtual qualifying rounds. The first rounds are open to the entire federal government. We down select into the, the second round. And from the second round, we take the top five teams into the finals. And we take the top 10 individuals from track A and track B. And then our finals, we invite them here into Arlington, Virginia at CISA facilities to compete in person. And we love having it here in person, not only to showcase CISA and, and the mission set in the space and that we have here, but also to let these individuals uh, network and build the community. Our individuals competition is split up into two tracks. Uh, track A focusing on defensive work roles and tasks, and track B focusing on offensive work roles and tasks. A lot of competitions really focused on penetration testing, poning other machines, uh, and here we like to have that focus on a defensive mindset of cybersecurity because that is a majority of jobs that you're gonna see in careers and mission sets within the cybersecurity world. It's challenging to set up um, a scenario uh, because a lot of times as a defender, there's a ton of context and data that you kind of need to immerse yourself in. And so to be able to do that in, in a challenge that somebody can solve it in a short amount of time uh, is challenging. Compared to other cyber competitions, they try to keep the problem set a lot more applicable to your actual daily job. Most CTFs is very theoretical, and um, and this some of the tools we use are actually you know used in the real world. So I really like that part of this presence code. The track B competition is focused on those the offensive side, you know the red team methodologies. These are things where we are going to be emulating what a potential threat might be doing to some systems. So we'll be hacking into systems, figuring out ways to exploit and break things. And then the teams competition is a mixture of both offensive and defensive capabilities. We have the industrial control system escape room this year for teams. We've partnered with the Idaho National Labs and that's gonna be really exciting and a new look for them in the finals. You know, some hands-on physical aspects that they have to get through uh, for the competition and that's new. Everything's always been virtual. One thing I liked about the teams competition in the finals is with the escape room. When we do teams competitions and CTFs, it's everyone takes their own problem, just working individually. But the escape room, you had to coordinate with each other to um, see which problem you could all be in at the same time and then move to a different problem. Um, so that kind of added a much better team aspect to that part portion of the competition versus other team separate competitions. We really start planning uh, nine or 10 months in advance of the competition. We start with a nice framework. We review the work roles and tasks that we want to focus on in the competition. And that's really the, the foundation where we start. What, what topics are we going to focus on? And then we spread out into other publica publications that CISA has put out, uh, the KEV catalog, what, what vulnerabilities might we want to include? What are some new topics such as zero trust that we want to include in the competition? We use some open source applications in, in, in building the, the challenges. We use Topo Mojo that was developed by the Software Engineering Institute out of Carnegie Mellon. Uh, and then we have two applications that we built for the competition, uh, Game Board, uh, uh, and to deliver the competition itself, and Identity is our authentication application. So our, our developers develop all the challenges within uh, Topo Mojo, uh, and then we go through a cycle, um, a monthly cycle leading up to the competition where they develop them. There's always something new, usually in President's Cup, that they're introducing fresh material, fresh challenges. It's been excellent to see the challenges improve year after year, and even just how it's all designed and how it's all tied together. Being able to be brought into CISA this year as part of the President's Cup team has been one of the most rewarding experiences of my life, being able to you know, jump right into a the, the competition. It's 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 an it's an all year planning event. There's so much that goes into it, and being brought in midway it was amazing to to see how the team just you know openly accepted me and, and welcomed me, and I was able to jump right in and being able to see the execution phase from the months and months of planning that we've been working in the hours and all the effort, being able to see the fruits of our labors. It's very rewarding as the team to be like, yeah, hey, we. We did that. We we all did that. The entire team, you know, working together, and and it worked so well. 
Well, the biggest change for President's Cup 5 was our timeline. Every President's Cup before started in the summer, end of summer time frame and, and ran through December. This year we shifted the time frame to start in, in January and, and end in April. And we did that mostly to avoid uh, any conflict with the November general elections. A lot of the individuals who play in the President's Cup, a lot of the individuals at CISA who are involved in putting on the President's Cup are also involved in election security and we didn't want to have any conflicts in that going forward. We're always really excited on what we have year in and year out with the, the President's Cup. In fiscal year 23, we had the President's Cup Act signed into law. With the new law, we, we have a new foundational support for the competition. It gives us consistency, lets the competitors know when they can register and play in the competition, lets them know what to expect, lets them know in the timing within the competition as well, and that, that's gonna help us grow. It's very exciting for us to see that there's a continued interest in, in the competition. We saw last year some finalists uh, met each other for the first time and then built a team to, to compete this year, and that's what we love to see. From the beginning, we wanted to build a community within the, the President's Cup, let everyone get to know each other, you know, be competitive year in and year out. We're excited to be able to host the competition here in CISA and have that network grow, let these individuals get to know each other. And that helps spread the word about the competition as well and then help us continue to grow. Also helps with networking. I met some really cool guys for the event, um, some from different services, from other agencies, others from the Air Force too. It's great to have those networking opportunities to learn more about different fields within the federal government and cybersecurity. This year we allowed them to, to select the, their agency that they represent, not just the, the department. So instead of the Department of Homeland Security, you could select the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency uh, as your sponsor for the competition. And we saw a lot uh, of, of really cool new agencies uh, come in. We saw the Federal Communications Commission uh, join up, also the National Credit Union Administration, the Security and Exchanges Commission, uh, and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Uh, those are just a handful of some of the new agencies that we saw participating in the competition. We saw last year some finalists uh, met each other for the first time and then built a team to, to compete this year, and that's what we love to see. From the beginning, we wanted to build a community within the, the President's Cup, let everyone get to know each other, you know, be competitive year in and year out. And then, yeah, new finalists, right? We always want new blood in the competition. We always want new people to, to participate. And seeing new individuals here in the finals, uh, like our, our former intern from the Department of Transportation, is very exciting, and that helps us grow as well. Generally, they might have registered by their department, uh, they may not have selected an agency at all uh, to participate in the competition. So we love seeing that diversification and, and the cybersecurity community grow within the competition as well. It is still heavily dominated by the Department of Defense and the military services, and that's totally understood and never gonna change. Uh, and we're excited for the participation that we get from, from those organizations. But we're also excited to see how the cybersecurity community reaches out to some of these other agencies and organizations you may not you know, identify as being part of cybersecurity. We're also really excited this year that we saw a Department of Transportation individual uh, make the finals uh, for us. So, so that's all very exciting. The cybersecurity competition space has really grown, you know, not just within the government, within the, with the President's Cup, but uh, within the community. So we're always taking a look at that. What, are, what can we do? What do people enjoy? You know, what can we be novel in and bring in the President's Cup? We're always looking to bring a new flavor and theme. It's very exciting for us every year, and, it, and it, I think the, the competitors seem to enjoy it as well, too. Last year, we had our Cube Space video game that had a, a, a space and alien theme and storyline. We're continuing that, and as a kid of the 90s myself, that was just a fun theme for us to run with. So we want to bring a fun aspect uh, to the competition. The SEI team has done an amazing job being able to gamify some of this challenge development to you know, focus on the fun elements of these incredibly technical tasks. It just makes it that much more exciting. We think we've done a great job with that year in and year out. And this 90s theme we all really enjoyed and we've got a lot of great feedback as well from the competitors in the community. We bring a video game environment in our training and education opportunities that you know maybe 
lower that barrier on entry into cybersecurity, make people not as intimidated in coming in and you know seeing command line, but a, maybe a, a video game interface that they're more used to. We've developed a practice area uh, over the last year uh, within our applications and our infrastructure. So any federal employee can play any of our old uh, President's Cup challenges at any time uh, for free within our practice area. A lot of practice on the practice site for the President's Cup with all of the past year's challenges and so that's been able to expand my skills and really keep them sharp especially because I don't necessarily use them every day in my job so important to keep those sharp for things like this. The President Cup does a great job of releasing previous year's challenges and having kind of uh, those challenges available all the time so people can jump on and uh, try challenges from previous years and if they you know many of them have solutions as well so they can try as far as they want and then go look at the solutions and it provides a wide variety um, of challenges that relate to all the different uh, work roles and the tasks associated with those work roles. It helps me stay fresh and, and keep learning. Within our communities, within the DOD, within the services, uh, having competitions like this helps foster a community of learning and of a competitive nature uh, where people are trying to get better and, and improve their skills. So not only do we take a lot of their feedback in growing the competition, but we've heard from them the opportunities that the competition has, has provided them. And the competition gives them that recognition of their, their peers and with their organizations. And we're really proud of that because not only do we want to put on the competition, we want to give these individuals an opportunity to grow in their careers. Going to grad school after I won the first year, um, I got a great full ride scholarship to Carnegie Mellon. And then even then I was talking to my thesis advisor. He said, oh, I looked you up and I saw you on this big competition. So I felt like you kind of knew what you're talking about. So I took you in as my master's thesis student. I have also received just sort of harder to describe, but visibility from high levels of command, which gives me a lot of social capital to influence problems and influence the domain around me in ways that are desirable. I very rarely come into a competition and start a question and know exactly what I need to do. It really doesn't hold your hand. It doesn't ramp up over time. It is, it's a great opportunity to learn something you haven't done before. And on the civilian side, I've actually applied a lot of the things that I've learned from the pre previous President Cups into my work and have actually, it's made me a better professional overall. It doesn't take a lot of your time. The individual challenges are a four-hour window uh, initially, and, the, and now the team challenges, at least for this year, were six hours. Uh, so it's not a, a large portion of your, uh, uh, of your time, but it can be really rewarding and, and help you grow as an individual. I will say from all the cyber challenges, this is a very nice combination of the environment that you give us is very good. You know, the, the Cali VMs through the browsers are actually really reactive. The time frame is nice because a four hour chunk is so much nicer than those two week long cyber competitions. The challenges are fun and very diverse, you know, like earlier in these competitions I learned more about blockchains, you know, so just sitting there fuddling through that and learning how to do the challenge. So it's always good to learn some new things. Getting to compete with some of the, the top competitors is definitely a, you know, a unique experience you don't find elsewhere. And it's kind of neat to see what the, the government has to offer as a whole when it comes to cybersecurity. Even if you've never done a cybersecurity challenge before or a CTF, the President's Cup is a great place to start, right? Um, the challenges are kind of tiered in difficulty where you'll start with, you know, you may be able to get the first couple flags, or you may not be able to get just the first flag, but you know, it gets you into this mode of working on challenges and kind of getting to the more complex levels. So it has a spot from everyone from an introductory level all the way to the experts. If you work for the federal government and you are interested in any sort of cybersecurity at all, even if it's just a little bit, even if you don't do it for your job, it's definitely worth doing. It's really fun, really interesting. Even if you don't make it to finals, it's still a great experience. You really get some new skills, developing those skills that are, you already have, and it's just really interesting.